What's up guys, Enrique here with another video and this time we're going to be doing a track from scratch utilizing the Pocket Operator 33, aka the Knockout. So let's get into it. So technically at this point in time I have no idea what I want to use, but I wanted to give you guys a quick little tour of my studio to see what we may potentially use in this track. So starting off from my, I guess right to left. We have the MPC-60, might take some drums, circuit mono station, Oberheim expander, bass station, peak, push to, you know, the Avalon bass line. We got this uh, off the track mess of cables, some Beats by Dre that I got for free. Do not judge me. I got them for free. I did not pay money for these. Do not judge me. Juno 106, small rack, modular rack, more modular stuff up here, a little four track once in a while rack units, MPC 4000 computer with this X key. So I most likely will probably use those outputs to grab the sounds and put them into the pocket operator 33. Actually, you know what? I got this cable right here. I'll just use this. This is just an eighth to two quarter stereo. So I'll just plug right into the back some of these synths. All right, so first up is the MPC 4000. I got a couple drums in here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and sample these onto one of the drum sections just because they auto detect the transients and it's a little easier to slice and I won't take up as many slots in the melodic. And to be completely honest, I'm not going to be playing these drums melodically. I'm going to keep them at the same pitch. So for that reason, I'm going to utilize the drums. I'm going to use um, section 13 and 14 and I'm going to put the kick and the three hi-hats on there because I know majority of the time I don't have the hi-hat and the kick playing at the same time because if they're on the same thing, I won't be able to play those two sounds at the same time. So then I'm gonna put the clap and this like tambourine shaker on 14. So let's get the kick and the hi-hats first. I'm gonna just hold down sound or uh, record and then number 13. So record 13. Cool. So the cool thing with this is it'll always find like the first one. The second one might be a little off. You can see it's here. But if I hit effects, I can go to TRI or trim. And this is gonna let me trim the uh, the sample up. So I can see, there it is. Now I can go here and find the next kind of sample for this. So let's see. There's that one. And let's find that last hi-hat. Awesome, so we have our four samples right there. Oops, I'm still in the trim mode. Oh man, I just saved that trim to all of them. So make sure once you save it to get out of the trim. So let's find this first sample. There, second sample. Third sample. And then the fourth sample. There we go. Cool. Awesome, that'll work. They're a little late, but I'm down with some of the sloppy. So on to the next thing. Actually, not the next thing. Let's get the uh, clap and the tambourine on 14. So again, hold down record, press 14. There it is. I'm fine with that. This could live here and this could live here. That's easy for me. So cool. Now let's go on to the next thing. All right, all right. So now we got the Juno 106. I got this beautiful pad right here. I'm gonna go ahead and sample it just like that onto the PO33. And this time I'm going to be utilizing one of the uh, melodic sections just because I'm going to be pitching that up and down later. And for the sake of being easy on myself, I'm going to press record and put it onto number four just because it's close and I can play the chord at the same time. So I'm going to hold down sound, or I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep saying sound. I'm going to hold down record and you can kind of see where it's uh, the level's at. So let's turn it up a little more. Maybe that'll be good. So I'm going to record this onto four again. So record four. All right, end it. A little crunchy, I'm down with that. Ooh, this is gonna be good. Okay, cool, on to the next thing. All right, so we got the chord. Uh, we have the drums. Now let's get a bass line. This one, I'm gonna bring out the old trusty peak. Uh, since it doesn't have a MIDI keyboard, I have uh, Push 2 sending MIDI notes to it. 
But again, since I'm going to be recording this into one of the melodic sections, I'm just going to record the middle C. So this will help me play chromatically later on. So again, this time I'm going to record onto the melodic number eight. So holding down record and then eight. Let's see how we're doing there. Let's turn up the volume a little bit. Let's go ahead and try to record that again. That's kind of mean. Let's do it. Record eight. You know what, I'm actually not mad at this selection of sound. I'm gonna go ahead and try to make a track with just these sounds. It'll be a really simple one, but I mean, it'll more, more than likely get the point across of how quick and easy it is to make a song with this thing. So cool, let's head to the desk. All right, we're here. Not so much a desk, more likely uh, an MPC 60, which will probably never let me live this down. I'm using this little pocket sampler on top of a legend, but you know technology the future is now next up now to access our samples i'm going to hold down sound hit number 13 and here we have the ones that we sampled earlier our kick drum i'm going to hit record so i can place this down in the step sequencer let me put this last one here that's kind of cool i'm going to hit record again to then be able to select a new sound let's do the classic uh Cool. Just throw one of those in randomly. Oh man, that is... So here's an interesting thing. Because this slice of that sound, which is... Uh, this happens so late, it actually doesn't even register here by the time this step comes in. So I'm going to go to Effects again and find the trim. Find this sound. All right, there we go. That's pretty spot on. So let's see if I put that here now, if it'll play it. There it is. Mm, that's pretty mean. Okay, cool. Now let's go find our baseline, which of course was from the peak and that's on pad nine. So holding down sound, pad nine. So I'm going to write a four bar pattern with this bass line, right? So right now we're currently on pattern four. I'm going to just hold down right and then pattern and it'll say, where do you want to paste that pattern to? So I want to paste it on three, two, and one, giving me essentially four of the same pattern that we wrote originally, which is this one. So now that I have our original pattern copied across the top four, the next thing you want to do is hold down pattern and say I want to play pattern one, then two, then three, then four. And this is going to chain those together and keep cycling back and forth. So now to enter in the live record mode, this little record button here on the top right, hit the right button and make sure it's turned off. If it's on, it won't work this way. So make sure you turn it off. Next up, what I'm going to do, since I can play this chromatically now, I'm going to press play and then hold down the right button to enter in the notes across the four bar pattern. So check this out. My God, that was awful. So if I just hit right, I can go and take some notes out. This last one, there we go. That's a lot better. So now, we have a four bar pattern of that same loop, but the bass line is different across all of them. Next up, I wanna hold down sound and find our Juno chord. And now I'm gonna turn the filter down a little bit on it. So hit effects, find the filter. a little quiet so I'm gonna hit effects again and find the T-O-N and actually I'm gonna to go to sound and then find the bass line and do the same thing and actually since this is live recorded in the way we have to edit the volume of this 
after we've recorded it in is we have to hold down the right button as it's playing across all four bars and turn the knob to the point that we want. So press play, hold down right, turn the volume down. Maybe I like it there. Now I just got to let it play for four bars. Cool, so that should be enough. Now let's go back to our Juno sound. Let's shorten up the sample length of it. So I'm going to go to trim and make sure record is off again. That'll always get you, it always gets me. So again, effects, trim. I'm going to catch that second note. That's cool. All right, so now let's get these Juno chords in here. A second ago, I showed you how to live record with the bass. This time I'm gonna take a different approach. I'm gonna find this note. You can see that we're not in record mode. We're in it, now we're out of it. And I can hit this note out of the 16 and then just hit right. And now I am placing that chromatic value onto the sequencer. So I can place one on the first step, press play. Let it play again. Now I'm going to play it again on the second one. So now let's find the low note that I want to play, which is this one here. So I'm going to press play, hit record, place it on the second pattern, and then on the fourth pattern. Right? And in between those, out of record mode, I want to play this one. So now that I have that selected, hit right, press play, Place another one there. Cool, so it's pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four. And actually, you know what, on pattern four, I'm gonna select this note again, enter right note, and place another one here, but let's wait till it gets there. So every time you stop it, it's gonna start back on the pattern that you originally were on. So to make that a little quicker, I can just hit pattern and go to four, and add that note there. So now let's just play pattern four over and over again. Right, so now we go to pattern and tie one, two, three, and four. Easy. So now let's go to sounds and go to sound 14, which is the uh, tambourine and the clap, which is this one here. So let's go ahead and place that here, let's see. This is cool. I'm just placing it slowly across all the steps. So now I'm going to exit record mode, find that clap. So I just hold down right and then enter that in. Easy. Start messing with it. I love this effect. So the cool thing is we got four bars going. If I were to hit right and turn the record mode on, I can actually record the automation of the effects. So I'm gonna turn it off and find some that we like. Maybe that one, so. Then stop it, and you can see it's automated. And that's again across four bars. Tie your patterns, you guys. It seriously adds so much to your tracks. I'm gonna go back to sound, go to the Juno, turn record mode off, find the filter, Hold down right, and then turn it down. Or record in automation. And then let go of record. You can hear that the resolution isn't the greatest, but it kind of adds this cool step and hold LFO, or sample and hold, sorry. Man, I can get used to this. 
anyway that was pretty fun you guys thanks for joining me on this uh if you saw some gear in the studio you want me to do a track from scratch with let me know in the comments below and as always you can follow me on my instagram where i post a lot of other videos here in my studio and maybe there's another piece of gear that i forgot to mention that you can ask me about on there so make sure to hit me up on instagram keep in touch and yeah i mean if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't like this video please give it a thumbs down and let me know why but um you guys know the drill appreciate all the support thank you so much share the love share the knowledge knowledge is power peace